dopamine. We've all heard about it at least once in our lives. And just in case you aren't aware, it's the molecule in your brain responsible for quite a number of things. The most important of which is the feeling of motivation, satisfaction, and ambition. Our bodies are meticulously designed constructs. Our brains have different types of responses for every little thing that we do. For example, touching a hot object makes you quickly move your hand away. That's the survival response. Heartbreak at being rejected by your crush. Fear in a dark alleyway. All of these are different types of responses that come from different types of generic molecules. A lot of things trigger a release of dopamine in our brains. Winning a competition, finishing a marathon, beating that boss you've been stuck on, acing an exam, being chased by someone, all of these things and more are responsible for dopamine being released in your brain. But there's something particularly different about dopamine. And it's something you need to be very careful about. See, when you go through a very emotionally stimulating event, your dopamine levels peak. These events can be anything from being near a robbery, a gunfight, getting into a street fight, or even things like PMO and getting intimate with your girl. Whatever the event may be, when your dopamine levels finally start to go back down after their peak, they don't just go to the baseline and stop. Instead, they fall much lower than that. This is why we should be careful about our dopamine levels. Still not sure why we should worry about this. Well, let me explain it a bit more clearly. But before I can do that, we need to talk about another molecule called dynorphin. Dynorphin is to endorphins what antimatter is to matter. Where endorphins and in turn dopamine are responsible for happiness, satisfaction, ambition, and desire, dynorphins are responsible for all of the pain, addiction, anxiety, and helplessness that we feel. So, every time our dopamine levels dip after their peak, the dynorphin levels start rising. Not sure if it's real. What if I said that you felt it at some point in your lives? Still not sure what I'm talking about. Post not clarity. If you've ever stopped to wonder why we feel so down after doing the deed, then this is your answer. It's the increased dynorphin levels in your body combined with the severely below baseline dopamine levels. When this happens and we start feeling down, the best thing to do is to avoid any emotionally stimulating things for a while at least until the dopamine levels return back to their baseline. Try not to engage in anything that can make them peak once again, because if you do, your dopamine levels are going to fall even more below the baseline. Moving back to why we should be careful about our dopamine peaks. It's one thing that our dopamine levels fall below the baseline after an emotionally stimulating event, but there's one another thing that we have to worry about, and this is quite important. So let's say you just went through a very stimulating event. Your dopamine levels peaked. You felt a lot of pleasure and satisfaction. All well and good. Then your dopamine levels start going down. And sure, they went below the baseline. But as long as you wait a bit and let them replenish, you'll be good to go. But what happens if you don't wait for your dopamine levels to replenish? What if you decide to stimulate yourself again? before your dopamine levels have returned to their baseline levels. What happens then? Well, a number of things. Let's go over them one by one. The first thing that's going to happen if you decide to reach for your dopamine peaks again and again without letting them return to normal is that it's going to become harder and harder to feel the same sense of pleasure and satisfaction as you felt the first time you did something. You're not going to feel as good as you did the first time. It's similar to working out in a way. The first time you start working out, curling just 4 kilos might be too much for you. But after a while, 4 kilos won't feel as heavy as they did before. And eventually, you're going to nearly stop feeling their weight altogether. So, if you for example, felt a lot of satisfaction from doing something, if you were to do it again and again and again, there will come a time when you will have become completely numb to it. Number 2 your baseline is going to go much lower than what it used to be. Let's take a 1 to 10 scale for example. Let's say that you're at your happiest at 10, saddest at 1, and completely normal at 5. 
5 is your baseline. It's your normal. Your dopamine levels return to 5 every time they're allowed to replenish. Now, if you were to frequently go through emotionally stimulating events without getting yourself any rest whatsoever, your baseline is going to go much lower than 5. Now, your baseline will be at 3. Whenever you experience a stimulating event, your dopamine levels will return to 3 after peaking. Sure, you won't be sad, but you won't be fine either. You'll still be below the normal. And the third and final thing that's going to happen is that the crashes are going to last much longer, and the peaks aren't going to last as long as they did. Your satisfaction is going to start fading away quicker and quicker, and every time your dopamine levels dip, it's going to take longer and longer for them to replenish. To avoid all of these, it's recommended to take breaks between doing stimulating things. Don't go on dopamine fast and completely avoid anything that gives you satisfaction. That's only going to make you miserable. Instead, try to focus on different things instead of going after that one easy dopamine rush. Just keep in mind not to peak too often. If you want more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe and take a look at the other videos on the channel. Why not like the video too? It will greatly help the channel.